Hey, hey, um, I'm gonna show y'all how to make a dual range slider that is adjustable using auto layout. In a previous video, I showed y'all how to do this with a progress bar where the gap value um, adjusts the progress. Um, this is gonna use a lot of the same techniques with a few key differences. Um, you can see that the, I've got uh, an example here um, and you can see the layer breakdown. I've got the range and progress auto layouts are essentially the same. They're what's in purple, um, the, the foreground purple color. And then uh, for the range slider, I've got an additional auto layout that is controlling the background. And this is where the adjustment's gonna take place in the left and right padding instead of the gap value, like in the progress bar. Um, so I already have this dot component uh, made and it has various states to it. And I'm gonna, instead of rebuilding that, I'm just gonna show you how it's made. So it's got this parent frame here and it is fixed fixed without the clipping. So that way the label within it, this content component can live outside of it. And this allows the label to move with the dot itself and also um, again live out live outside of the bar itself and then for the tooltip is also just within the frame set to center center and the help icon is turned off and the frame is size has been reduced to 8, eight to just fit nicely within that um, so we're going to take this dot and use it within our start and end points. So let's start constructing this. So I'm gonna make the foreground purple bar. So we're gonna make this eight pixels high. Um, we're gonna go ahead and round the corners. Let's give it a fill of our enabled foreground. And then we need our start and end points within that. So I'm gonna make this eight pixels. I'm gonna name this start. And then I'm gonna drop the dot inside of that and center it. And then remove clipping so it shows up. And then I'm gonna drop that within here and left align it. And then I also need to remove clipping. Let's call this, forgot to name that later, let's call this range. And then I need my endpoint. So I'm gonna duplicate that, call it in, and then I'm gonna align it to the right. Let's throw an auto layout around there. And then instead of having the gap here, we're gonna set this to space between. So we essentially got our foreground made. Let's make the background. Let's round those corners. Let's call it bar. Give it a background color of opacity secondary. And then I'm gonna drop this in. Oh, let's make sure it's eight pixels high. And clipping is turned off. And I'm gonna make this an auto layout as well. I'm gonna make sure that the range is set to fill. which means this can be set to fixed. But I've got equal pattern on either side. So you can see this is where it's starting to adjust. And then you can click this icon here and adjust it more on one side than the other. Um, but just to make sure we get the wrapper correct, I'm gonna zero this out. I'm gonna throw a frame around it. I'm gonna name it wrapper, and then I'm gonna use set this icon up here to resize it. So it's gonna hug all the contents. Um, I forget to use this often, but it's resized to fit, and it will nicely frame everything. And then I'm just gonna throw another auto layout frame on there because this will be the parent frame where I'll add some padding. Um, maybe a little one like eight top and bottom, 16 left and right, um, so there. And then that would be my master layer. And then I'm gonna set this wrapper to fill container. 
And then within that, because this isn't an auto layout container, I want to set this bar's constraints to left, right, which essentially acts the same as fill container um, when an auto layout hasn't been applied. So that way it still fills the container. And then if I click into range, I can adjust or not range, I click into bar, that's it. I can adjust each size to get that range slider, and then again, it still fills that container out. Oh, I need to make sure that, oops, that's left and right. I actually want it to go all the way out to the edge. There we go. And it should stay all the way out to the edge. So you just got to make sure you set it where you want it first, then set left and right, and it should behave appropriately. And that's how you make a range slider. Um, if you have other ways of making a range slider, other techniques you use that work really well, I would love to hear them. Comment below. Um, I hope that you have found this helpful, and thanks.